everyone welcome back to another video today I have another video for you on how to improve your coloring skills this is going to be part two I had released a video a couple days ago on how to improve your coloring skills and it was so well received and so many of you requested that I come back with a part two so I sat down today and I put together some more tips and tricks and ideas on how you can improve your coloring skills and so that is what we are going to talk about today if you enjoy videos like this please do make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn your bell notifications on so that you always get notified every time I post a new video if you like this video please do give it a thumbs up because it really helps my channel out a lot in the description box below you will find a link to my Facebook group if you would like to join us there. It is a wonderful coloring community and I think you will really, really love it there. I also have a link to my Patreon as well as a link to my email list. If you decide to join my email list, you will get a free color swatch chart sent to you in your email so that you can swatch all your favorite colored pencils. Let's go ahead and get into this video. In this video, just as I did in the last one, we're going to be working on a page here in Romantic Country, a fantasy coloring book by Erie. It's an absolutely beautiful coloring book. And I am going to use the same page that I used for the last one, this page here. And I'm just going to use this page to demonstrate and show you different examples on different ways that you can improve your coloring skills. But I want to start from the very beginning in this video and the very first thing I wanted to share with you is the importance of a good pencil sharpener and having a very sharp lead on your colored pencils. So many colorists think that you can just use any pencil sharpener you'd like to on their colored pencils and that is so far from the truth unfortunately. Depending on the type of pencil that you're working with you have to take extra care and consideration when you're choosing what pencil sharpener you're going to use on your pencils. Now, especially when you're using colored pencils like Prismacolors, Prismacolors have a very soft, soft core, and so they have to be sharpened with such care. And they are not the same as what you see here, like this regular just number two pencil. I don't even think it's ever been sharpened quite yet. It probably just came this way. And it looks a lot like the Prismacolor does, which this color has not been sharpened yet either because it's not a color that I necessarily use all the time, <laughs> as you could probably tell. So anyways, what I just want to really mention and emphasize is that when you have a regular pencil that you could use in any pencil sharpener, it will work with any pencil sharpener, this pencil just has a very hard graphite lead. And colored pencils are very different from that. These Prisma colors, they have a very soft lead, and so they really have to be handled with care because if you put them in just any pencil sharpener, you are gonna end up just grinding away your pencil and grinding away your pencil because they are actually so sensitive that if you put too much pressure on it inside the pencil sharpener or you use a pencil sharpener like an electric pencil sharpener or something of that sort, it is doing damage to your pencil because it's putting too much pressure on the lead. When you spend this much money on a set of Prismacolors, you don't want to be just grinding your pencil away and grinding it away or damaging the tip of the pencil so that it will just continuously just keep breaking while it's in your pencil sharpener. And that was happening to me for a very long time. With that being said, it took me a very long time to find the perfect pencil sharpener for my Prismacolor pencils. Most of you that have been watching my videos for a very long time, you know that my absolute favorite pencil sharpener is this Doll 133. I'm gonna go ahead and show you in this video how this pencil sharpener works just because I've had so many people come to the Facebook group after purchasing this pencil sharpener and they can't figure out how to get it to work. First of all, it has this little dial here on the back of the pencil sharpener that you can turn. And if you can see this, this 
side right here is a much duller lead and then this side here will sharpen it to a much sharper lead. Dependent upon how sharp or how dull you want your lead, you would just turn this little silver lever here back and forth. I'm not going to turn mine to show you because I have mine exactly where I want it. I like to have the very sharp, sharp lead when I am coloring with my colored pencils. So let me go ahead and show you how it works. The way that it works is you just push this side bar in, or side button, and you pull it out, and then you take your Prismacolor, or whatever pencil you're uh, sharpening, you push this in again, and you put your pencil in. Don't slam it in or push it too hard or anything of that sort because again like I said when you put too much pressure on the tip of these pencils they will break. And if you cause the pencil or the lead of the pencil to break sometimes they will break all the way through and you'll just keep end up keep sharpening and sharpening and sharpening and wondering why you're not able to get a lead and it just keeps breaking and you've sharpened all of the way and you have no pencil left but that was my experience with other pencil sharpeners I literally was sharpening my Prismacolors away to nothing and that is when I was using the Teagall I know a lot of people in the um coloring groups on Facebook will recommend the Teagall but I will tell you the Teagalls they will work very well for the first I don't know the first few weeks and then they end up getting very dull so they stop working and that's what happened to me with I've got three of them and I have them thrown in a basket in my closet now because they just weren't working for me anymore so then you just take this and you're gonna turn it you turn the lever And generally, it will stop when it's done. For some reason, on the Prisma colors, it doesn't always stop when it's done. So I always pull this out and I check it and I see how sharp the lead is. And to me, this is fine. So you remember what it looked like before. This is what it looks like now. It's absolutely beautiful. And this is perfect to color with. You always want to color with a sharp lead. You don't want your lead to be extremely dull when you're coloring. You will see the difference. If you go to try to use a dull lead on your coloring page and then you go ahead and sharpen it, you will see the difference. Like when you get all your Prismacolors in the mail or any pencil set in the mail, always make sure to prepare your pencils by sharpening them. I always do that. I go through the whole entire set and I sharpen them. Now, the same thing would happen if I put my regular pencil in here. Of course, you could hear it. Do you hear the loudness of this pencil? How loud it is? That's because the wood of this pencil is much harder. Now I will tell you, this Doll 133 pencil sharpener, it will work on any pencil you put in it. I use it on my Crayolas. They have a much harder wood, just like this regular uh, graphite pencil here. And they also work on my much more soft cord pencils. But this pencil sharpener, I have sharpened all of my Crayola, my whole, all 120 using this pencil sharpener and it is still going and going and going like it just doesn't quit. I don't want to keep talking about it because I don't want to jinx, my, jinx myself. <laughs> uh, hopefully that doesn't happen. But it is a absolute wonderful pencil sharpener. I will have the link for this pencil sharpener down in the description box below so that you could check it out if you want to get yourself an amazing pencil sharpener. The other pencil sharpener that I also use when I just want to, I always keep it in this cup because of course it's portable and it doesn't have a place to contain my um, pencil shavings. So I always make sure that I keep it sitting on my desk in this cup. And let me get another one that has not been sharpened yet. How many do I have that haven't been sharpened? Not very many. Okay, so here's another Prismacolor that has not been sharpened. And I'm going to show you how well this little coom sharpener works. This one is great if you just want to freshen up your leads on your pencils so that you don't always have to use the doll that is going to, um, you know, take away more of your pencil. So I use the doll when I want to get a really fresh lead. And then I come back and I use this one when I just want to freshen it up. So the way that you sharpen your pencil is you just take the pencil sharpener 
and you put the pencil sharpener, you go around with the pencil sharpener. You don't ever go around with the actual colored pencil. And what this does, it is going to alleviate you putting pressure on the pencil and forcing the pencil into the actual pencil sharpener. It is a little bit more difficult to do it this way, but it works well with this pencil sharpener because if you see, if you could see this, it's got these little grips on the sides of the pencil sharpener. And so that really helps to keep your hand in place when you're doing this. Now see, I don't use these very often because it does take more time, but and you can see that I'm getting literally pigment all over my fingers and everything. And then of course that always transfers somehow if I don't clean my hands really well or clean off my space really well, it ends up transferring to my coloring page and we don't want that. So you have to make sure when you use the portable ones like this, it's a really excellent pencil sharpener, but some of the downfalls of those are those few things I just mentioned. You have to make sure you clean off your area really, really well. If you're going to place your coloring book there, always try to keep your um, where you're keeping all of your shavings after using this off to the side of your desk and not necessarily where you're going to be coloring and that will alleviate having those issues. But this is the nice sharp lead that that pencil sharpener gave me. And as you can see, it is beautiful. It's not broken. But these are the two best pencil sharpeners I have been able to find. I love them both and I use them both for different reasons. Now, some of us like to travel and take our coloring with us if we're going to a friend's house. I really don't have anybody that lives by me that colors, so I don't really have anywhere to go with my coloring and I'm always here filming a video for you guys. So I don't generally take my coloring out anymore, but when I did, that's when I was still using my T-Galls and I was so beyond frustrated because I would take out one and it wouldn't work. Then I would take out another and it wouldn't work. And I was just like, what is going on? And it's like I kept having to order new ones. And yes, they're only between five and seven dollars depending on the current Amazon price. But if you have to keep ordering or reordering a cheap pencil sharpener over and over again, it is going to end up costing you as much as a very high-end pencil sharpener and believe me I've tried all the high-end pencil sharpeners and I always go back to this one this is the absolute best one and it is only eleven dollars on Amazon so I went and chose three colors to work with and they look really pretty together I always have my coloring book here in the center and then off to the side of my coloring book I always keep a piece of paper this is the Spring Hill paper it is my absolute favorite paper but I always keep a piece of paper off to the side to swatch out my colors you can see I tried it here with another color and then I tried the two colors again with the um, what is this with the slate gray and I liked it better with the slate gray I thought that it gave it more contrast and looked really cool I thought when I tried it here with the more olivey green that it looked like it was a little bit too much so if you always keep a little piece of scratch paper to test out your color combinations off to the side that is a really great great way to make sure that you've got the right colors together before laying them down on your coloring page with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get back to our beautiful, very sharp leads on our pencils and why it is so important to have a sharp lead. When you're coloring, when your lead is very, very dull, like say I wanted to color in this pot right here. If I were to color with a dull lead, let me see if I can grab one as a dull lead. Let me go ahead and grab this pencil here and show you why you probably don't want to be coloring with a dull lead. This is the color I think that I pulled out earlier before and it has never been sharpened. This is how the Prisma colors come. And if you look very closely, you could see that there's kind of a wax um, film, which is kind of like a protective layer still on the outside of this pencil. And so when it colors and goes down on the paper, it's not going to look the same on your coloring page or whatever it is you're coloring or drawing or whatever if you don't sharpen it first. The other reason is that if I take this more dull lead, oh, I really wanted to color this page, but <laughs> we'll see after I use it as a test page if I could still come back and color it. But if I come down here and I start laying this, like this is not working for me. 
it is putting a very wide mass of color. Now if I was just laying my highlights down, this would be fine, but look how much more area it's covering and it is also, like I could feel the difference when I'm using a pencil with a very sharp lead and a pencil that has never been sharpened yet before. This one is kind of catching on the paper and I could feel like there is something just kind of blocking it from going down on the paper. When I color with a pencil that is very newly sharpened and not one that just came out of the box straight from shipment, I can really feel the difference in the amount of pigment that is going down on the page. It lands on the page and it drags across the page much, much smoother and with much more ease. So I guess when I color this in, I'm going to be using this color now because I've already laid it down on my page. <laughs> Even though I wanted to use the other colors, but that's okay. The demonstration is all that matters, right? Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is the pressure of your pencil. I don't know if the contrast between these two colors is going to be that great. Let me go ahead and get the blue one that I was going to use, and we'll see how these colors look together. If they don't look good together, that's fine. You could see now that I have a very sharp lead, and so when I come in here, it's going to color in a very much smaller area. If I wanted to get in here with the very fine details, and I just wanted to color in one very small place or very small space to be able to just add somewhat of a shadow or a contrast in the colors, it's going to allow me to do that. If I took this other pencil that has never been sharpened before and I try to do that, I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to be going out of the lines and it is much harder to stay where I need to stay. And also I could still feel the difference where this one is just not going down on the paper, just like the previous one that I just got done using. It's very, very difficult to be able to use that pencil in that way. And when I was a beginner colorist, I would get my pencils in the mail and I used them just like that. I didn't understand the importance in sharpening my pencils and having sharp leads. Now let's talk about the pressure that you're laying on your pencil. When you are coloring, you want to make sure that, especially with Prismacolors, that you're not putting a lot of pressure on your lead because what's going to happen is you are just going to grind away that lead because your pressure is so much. You are going to just tear apart the tooth in the paper so that you cannot apply as many layers and you really want your colors to be able to blend together really nicely. So you don't want to just keep going and going and grinding away at the tooth of the paper until you are totally ready to burnish the colors together and you have all of the colors laid exactly where you want them, then that's when it's time to get rid of the white of the paper and use a little bit harder pressure. But it's very important that you just lay very light layers, not even just with these pencils, but with any colored pencils that you're using, lay very light layers one at a time. Now, if you are someone who has a very heavy hand, Try holding your pencil to the side. If you can see, I, try, I have it pretty much zoomed out because I want you to be able to see how I'm holding my pencil. But if you could see how I'm holding my pencil, I'm holding my pencil very much to the side and I am just laying the color down exactly where I want it. And the color, these are so pigmented that even with a very light hand, the color is still going to lay down nicely on the page. Your Prismacolors are going to be one of the most pigmented pencils that you could buy and they're very easy to color with. You don't have to go through the extra work to be able to lay your color down and get them to blend and be able to get the effects that you want to be able to get on your coloring page. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to try to add a little bit of this lighter color to get or on here just to create a little bit of highlight and kind of lighten these other colors up. But again, I'm still using fairly light pressure, a little bit more than what I was previously, 
but I'm not going in with a very heavy, heavy hand. If you want to preserve your pencils and you don't want to just have to keep grinding them away in the pencil sharpener, you need to always make sure that you are just using very light pressure like this. This is going to help save your pencils. It's going to help you create something absolutely beautiful with much less effort. Yes, it's going to probably take a little bit more time, but you don't want to just be smacking all the pigment down onto the paper, especially when you're using very dark colors that are very deeply, deeply pig pigmented. Like, for example, if I come in here with one of my absolute favorite blues, this is my indigo blue. This is one of my favorite blues. Those of you that have been following me for a while, you know that I love the color indigo blue when I'm using blues or even other colors and I just want to add a very drastic shadow because it makes all of the other colors just really pop off the page. And I have a lot of greens in here, but they're kind of like grayish greens as you can see. So if I come in here And again, I'm holding it to the side and I'm using very light pressure. And you could see that the pigment is very nicely going down onto the page. And you can go over this a couple times before you start coming in and adding much more pressure. And then you can come back, what was this color that I used, slate gray? You can come back with your slate gray and you could kind of just pull these colors through. And then I can come back with my jade green and pull them through a little bit more. And as you go, it's okay to apply a little bit more pressure, but don't ever come in with a very heavy, heavy hand and I know a lot of us are so used to using the heavy hand just because that is the way a lot of us grow up. Like we grow up with crayons and it's okay to just push on your crayons and color and whatever. I have always been a very heavy handed writer and colorist and whatever. So I've really had to train myself to learn to not do that. And if you just keep practicing over time, you will not only learn how important it is, you will be able to change the way that you color and the amount of pressure that you yourself puts on the pencils. Because you want your Prismacolors to last for quite a long time. I mean, my 150 set, I have only used a couple colors to the end. And I have still almost every single one of them except for like my main colors that I use all the time. And I've had them for probably two years now. I still have my full very first um, ones that I started out with, which was a 36 set. And I still have the whole set of those because I've taught myself not to color with a heavy hand. Now look how gorgeous these colors are together. I just created another color combination. And see, I'm still going in here with a very light hand. Now if I wanted to come back with that indigo blue and I wanted to push just a little bit harder, I could go in a circular motion to make sure I get more of that color laid down and go in a little bit heavier. And it's going to add all that much more depth and dimension into what it is that I'm coloring. And then come back again and pull it through. And don't burnish the colors together, like I said, until you're completely ready. But when you are ready to burnish your colors together, if you want to, you can use the white Prismacolor pencil or you can even use the Prismacolor blender. I don't generally like to use the Prismacolor blender a whole lot. I very rarely, rarely use it. But just for demonstration's sake, I've got my Prismacolor blender and I'm gonna show you exactly what happens when I come back and I blend these colors together. 
but if I just go with in a circular motion over all the colors, you can see how it really just brings all the colors together. But see, for me, we all have our own style. And for me, I just don't like the look that it gives it. And I know everybody has their own opinion and everybody, I want to encourage all of you to find your own style, find the way that you like to color. That is one of the most important things. If you start coloring a certain way and you realize, I really love how this is turning out. Like this right here is not necessarily my style. If you look, you could see what my style is. I mean, there is nothing wrong at all with this one here. It's really, really pretty. It's blended together very, very nicely. But the one that is more my style are the ones that are up here. If you look at the ones up here, I've got much deeper colors, much deeper shadows. I left a little bit of white space in here. And this is what I teach all of you. But I want you all to know how important it is to not necessarily take everything I say and think that it is the right way because we all have our own style. We all color very differently. And I basically showed you a whole different way of doing things down here rather than how I did it here. Because if you look at this one, even on this one, I finished coloring this one in on camera because I really want to finish this page. And I could probably, this isn't necessarily my style, so I probably wouldn't keep it, but I really wanted to just use this as a demonstration to show you all the difference in the difference it makes in the amount of pressure you're putting behind your pencil so if you look at this and you look at this you could see that they're two completely different styles this one you could see has a lot more texture in it I made sure that I created a lot of texture with my pencils as well as this one. If you want to see me do these, these were in the first video and I'll make sure that I have that linked in the upper right hand corner so that you can go back and you can watch that video. So the next thing I want to talk to you about is how important it is to choose your colors wisely. When you're choosing your colors for your coloring page, always make sure that you choose colors that are going to go together. This goes back to why I always keep a color swatching sheet or a page, not necessarily, not a color swatching sheet, but a page to be able to test all my colors. So I guess a color swatch test, testing page off to the side of my coloring book. I always have this there. I'll usually have my color swatch chart as well laying out. And so I could kind of look at the colors and see what goes well together or get an idea of what goes well together. And then I'll choose those colors from my set and I'll bring them here and I'll just kind of swatch them out as you can see where I tested these different colors like I showed you earlier in the video. If you're a beginner, my suggestion would be to try to stay in the same color family. After you're coloring for a little while and you get a little bit more experienced in what you're doing and you've kind of learned how to blend your colors together and you've kind of concentrated on working with just one set of pencils that is also very important if you are working with prismacolors try to stick to prismacolors so you kind of get to know them every pencil brand is very different so if you want to get to know your Prismacolors, like I know my Prismacolors, so I don't necessarily need my swatch sheet laying here all the time because I have certain color combinations that I use together all of the time and I know what colors just by looking at them are going to go well together. So it's really important when you first start out to try to stick to colors in the same color family and I'm going to show you right now exactly how you could stay in the same color family and still create something absolutely beautiful. I grabbed a couple colors. They're all in the same color family. And I just want to show you a little something. So when I'm picking my colors, right here I've got parrot green, gray green light, and then I have light green. This light green is a fabulous color. Now I also had this true green. So what I did first is, this is why it's so important to have a swatch sheet. I took my 
what is this color, the true green, and I laid that one down. And then I took my light green and I laid that one down. Now, if you look at this, you could see that these two colors are so close to one another. Let me zoom you in just a little so that you could see this. But look how close to one another these colors are. You could see with these two colors next to one another that there's definitely not enough contrast between the two to make the object on your page really, really pop. So what I was trying to do first was I was trying to do this light green with the true green and then I was going to bring in and use my uh, gray green light as a highlight color, which is a gorgeous highlight color for greens but there's not enough contrast between these two and I really just want to be able to use three colors to make it easy. Now you can always use both of these colors but you're going to need something else to actually darken this up so that you've got enough, a contra enough of a contrast from one color to the next. This color here, which one was that? The True Green, that's a fantastic transition color. If I was trying to transition from something that is much darker into the light green. So I could use it for that if I wanted to, but I wanna start out with three colors and see if I don't really need a transition color. You don't always need transition colors if your colors will blend well together. And with the Prismacolors, it's pretty easy to get your colors to blend well together. So what I did is I took out that true green and I just got rid of it. So I put that one off to the side and then I came back again and I laid my light green back down on my tester sheet and then I came in and laid my gray green light down with that one and then I went and grabbed the parrot green which is a very much more dark bright vibrant color and I laid this in with this to see exactly how it would go and look how pretty that is. So I love these colors together. So now that I'm ready and I've got the colors I wanna use, I've used my tester sheet, I'm gonna come over to my coloring page. And so now it's okay to take those three colors that I've chosen and work with them on my page. So let's go ahead and see what this is going to look like. I've got a very dark green, then I've got a mid-tone green that is still kind of bright. You guys know, if you've been watching my videos, that I love using mid-tone colors that still have some brightness to them right along with my highlight color, and I especially love doing this if I'm bringing in four colors. But if you're a beginner, you don't need to use four colors. I'm going to show you exactly how these look together once you color an object on this page. They are going to look beautiful because you're going to have such a bright highlight color and then such a very dark, much darker bright um, color for shadowing. So let's go ahead and use it on these little jars down here. So I'm going to start by coming in with my gray green light and I'm just going to go over this little basil jar here. And then I'm going to come in with my light green. And I'm just going to add some of that in here too. And you guys know if you've been watching my videos for quite some time, any time something looks as though or you want to make it look at as though something is sitting behind the other, you would just shade it in a little bit darker in that one area. So what I'm doing here is I'm just adding a little bit extra pigment 
right in this area and you could see still just like I showed you earlier with very light pressure I'm still able to get quite a bit of pigment down on the paper just by adding in layers do you see that it makes such a huge difference and I'm not pushing hard with my uh, with my hand at all and I'm still holding my pencil to the side now this is my much darker color this is my parrot green look how gorgeous this is and I'm coming back in here and I'm just gonna add some of this and I just kinda wanna make it look like this one is laying behind And then what I like to do, again, this is my style and not necessarily something you have to do. This is just what I do. But if I have like a little sign or something like that laying on something, I will just come around and I will do this around all the sides of that little sign because I'm trying to create the look again that the jar is actually behind the sign. So that is just a little trick that I've kind of come up with that I always do. And then to separate the areas, you need to make sure again, this is why you need to have a very sharp lead because if you're trying to come in here and your lead is dull, like you've never sharpened your Prismacolor, then this is absolutely not gonna work for you. But I want to show some kind of transition here between the actual jar and the, let, or the lid of the uh, container. So now I'm gonna come back with my light green. And I'm gonna use a light hand and I'm just going to pull some of these colors through. And in the areas that I want a lot of highlight, I am going to try to stay out of those areas so that way the highlight really shows up. And see how I've kind of just created my highlight in these areas here, right around here? And that is what is going to make the objects on your coloring page really stand out. And see, this is another thing that's just kind of has to do with my style and the way that I color. This is why it's so important to find your own style, y'all, because there's going to be a lot of things that you like to do. Like, I'll watch other colorists on YouTube, and I do very often. And a lot of the things that they do, like I've noticed I don't do, and a lot of the things that I do, they don't do. And that's another reason why it's so important to not just watch one colorist on YouTube and to watch many because you could kind of take all of their ideas and just kind of put them all together and form your own style by getting a bunch of different ideas and not just focusing on one general thing. And then kind of come up with your own things and the way that you like to do things and kind of throw those into the mix too. So now I'm going to come back with my highlight color, but my highlight color has a little bit of a dull lead, and this is a very small space, so I'm going to go ahead and just, I only gave it two turns just because, again, like I told you, you don't want to be sharpening away your Prismacolors. And then I'm just going to come in here and I'm gonna pull these colors together and kind of spread them out. But all these colors are in the same color family. And it still looks really pretty. I've got my highlight, I've got my midtone, and I've got my much darker shade. Now, if I wanted to, I can always come back and I can add more to it. So with this color combination, there's not really another green 
kind of along these lines, staying in the same color family, that's really going to darken this up and add a shad shadow. At least not in the colors that I found, but then I've got colors all over my desk everywhere and in containers for different projects, just because I do YouTube. <laughs> And then I've got my own stuff I've got going on on the side. So I wanted to show you guys a little trick when you're sticking with the same color family, what you can do that is going to, uh, this, this trick is life changing, it really is. And so many people don't know about this trick. So that is bringing in your gray pencils. So the way that we do this is if you're using cool colors, which green is a cool color, you've got cool colors and you've got warm colors on the color wheel. Your warm colors are colors like your reds, your oranges, and your yellows. And then you've got your cool colors, which are your greens and your blues and colors like that. So with that being said, the way that you would choose your gray that you're gonna use to put a little bit more shading on here is you're gonna choose a cool gray. I've got my 50% cool gray and I'm gonna try that one first and show you all how that works. I was gonna try the 70% cool gray but I think that one is just a little bit too dark. So let's go ahead and come in here and add some of this gray and look how that is just adding shadow into here. Look at the difference. Now I am still in the same color family, used all my greens, and I just didn't think that there was enough shadows in there. So all I did was just add a little bit of gray and it makes such a huge difference. And I'm gonna go back around here where I wanted more shadows to really make the little stand, or the little uh, sign stand out. Now, if you still look at this and you're just thinking, oh my gosh, it's still not enough. I want a little bit more shadows. This was the 50% cool gray. So if that's not enough for you and you want it to look like it has even more depth, what you would do is you would just go to the next pencil that you have that is a cool gray and that would be my 70%. So let's come in here and I'll demonstrate and show you exactly what that does. And if you notice, because I have used light pressure while applying my colors, this paper is still taking color. But the pigment is still laying down from these Prisma colors. Now if you wanted to, you can come back with your darkest green that we were using, which was my parrot green. And you could just add a little bit more of that and just kind of pull it down and pull it through. And then come back with the next color you were using, which was your light green. And then pull it through again. But you can continue to keep working on this until it is or looks the way that you want it. And I probably should go ahead and do the lid on this jar. But do you see the huge difference that just adding that gray made? Now, like I said, if you are using cool colors, you stick with the cool grays. If you are using warm colors like the reds and the oranges and the yellows, you need to use the warm grays. 
because those are going to interact the best with one another. Let me go ahead and just finish this in finish this uh, really quick so that we could do the top here. I want a lot of highlight here in the center. And then I got to come back with my light green and add some of that in there. Now my parrot green. Now see, I don't want to go too dark down here along this line because uh, that's where I used my gray and my darker colors because I want to be able to show that separation in the, in the jar between the two pieces. And then I'm just going to go in and I'm going to grab my 70% gray and I'm going to add these shadows where I want them. And then I'm just going to come back and I'm just going to pull these through with my lightest color. And kind of finish this off. And now that it's got the whole thing done and I've kind of burnished it out, it looks much better than it did before. And see, knowing me, I would just keep coming back and I would add a little bit more in here. Like I would take my gray and I would just add a little bit more detail. I would come in here to this corner and I would use my gray to add a little bit more shadowing. Maybe a little bit texture. and kind of pull this in here and make it look like it's more behind there or behind the other um, ah. see I'm trying to talk too much and so that's when I just feel like I'm gonna mess up <laughs> but you can see as I just keep coming back and I add more and more how it just all starts to come together. And look at the dramatic difference you can make just by using gray. And a lot of people don't know, like a lot of beginner colorists, and I didn't know when I first got my Prismacolor set, I had no idea why I had all those grays. But the grays are there for a reason, and this is exactly what they are for. But see, like I feel like I'm such a perfectionist at times because it's like I don't stop until it looks exactly the way that I want it to look. But I really like how it looks. I blow some of that wax off the paper, but I really like how it looks. I love how it turned out. The, that color combination is absolutely beautiful. So if you just have your swatch sheet off to the side so that you could always test out your colors. That is so, so important. Always use a very, very sharp lead on your pencils. It makes a huge, huge difference. And you can come up with something that looks absolutely beautiful and still stay in the same color family. You can see alone in this video where this started out one way and I just kept coming back and I just kept adding a little bit more and a little bit more and it really changed the way that it looked like we've got way more shadows way more depth here and it gives an illusion as though it's kind of actually real and just popping off the page rather than just a flat image sitting on the page. You don't ever want a flat image sitting on the page. This one up here that I colored where I showed you what flat coloring is, this is what flat coloring looks like. And this is the difference between it being flat 
and this one being all burnished in and then this one over here has a little bit of texture it has more texture in this one than it does in this one so those are the differences and again it all falls along the lines of your style and what you want things to look like now if I were to come down here and I were to color this little shelf that's here when I color the shelf I want to make it look like this is a very bright vibrant color these greens here but if I wanted to really make these jars say it was going to color these jars in all deep vibrant colors and I wanted to make it look as though this was the focal point and the shelf is just kind of there and it just kind of fits into the page I'm not going to use very bright colors on the shelf. I'm going to use more neutral colors on the shelf. Yes, I want the shelf to show. Yes, I want the shelf to stand out. But my focal point, if my focal point is these or are these little jars sitting up on the shelf, I want to make the page look that way. So I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. I went and grabbed some pencils and I tested them out just like I showed you. And so we are going to come back and we're going to try to color the shelf. Now, like I said, I still want my shelf to stand off the page, but I want it to be extremely contrasting with the little canisters that are sitting up here on the shelf. So I got a few colors and I don't know where I'm going to add the cream, but I kind of am thinking that I want a little bit of yellow in there. So I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to use, this is, did I say this was 20% French gray? And I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to color some of this. I'm going to try to make this a quick color because I just really want to show you exactly what I mean. But I know that this video is already probably quite long because I'm almost out of battery. <laughs> And then I'm going to come in here with my cream and I'm just going to add a little bit of that. I've never really done this before. This is kind of experimenting with colors. So we'll see how this looks. So I laid those two down. That was my 20% French gray and my cream. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to add a little bit of the light umber to this. And because this is wood, I want to have some texture here and the way that we create texture is by doing exactly what you see me doing just kind of going back and forth like this and when you use a mix of colors and do that that is how you create texture in your coloring page And so now I'm going to come with my, oh, I didn't do these down here. Let me go ahead and add a little bit of the, what was this, light umber? So let me go ahead and add a little bit of the light umber to these legs on the shelf. And of course, I'm going a little bit darker in here because like I told you before, these are kind of setting under. And I'm holding it to the side, or holding my pencil to the side because I'm trying to create some texture here. And anytime you see lines, like when you're coloring the wood, like over here, like the lines that the colorist or the artist actually drew in, you want to make sure that you go over those areas now if you could see up under here it's going to show the most on this jar here because this jar here is colored in but there is going to be more of a shadow up under the jars so you want to put more of your darkest color up under the jars and then of course where you have this um, basket here and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to pull some of that out with my, was this light umber? Yes, it was light umber. So 
So now let me come back with the dark umber and do these areas here to really make those contrast. And as you can see, I'm just kind of turning my pencil. And that is another little trick you can do with your pencils when you feel that the lead is kind of getting a little bit more dull. You can turn your pencils as you go so that you can get a little bit more out of them. is starting to come together very nicely. And you can see the difference in these two. You could see how much this is actually standing off of this. And then I'm going to come back with this and I'm just going to kind of pull it through. This is my light umber. And the shelf is actually almost done because I don't want to burnish it in that much. Because by burnishing it in too much, you're actually going to lose the texture that you created. And when you're coloring something like this, you don't want to do that. But look what that gray does. So pretty. And then I'm going to come back with my cream color. And I'm just going to kind of fill the cream in in different areas just to kind of give it that extra little bit of pop. And it looks really pretty. I could come back and I probably will make it pop a little bit more off the page, but that is a perfect example of using a focal point. So our focal point would be this little canister here that we colored in this bright, vibrant green. And then we are creating contrast in the two colors, the shelf and then this little canister here. But we don't want the shelf to be our focal point. So you can see if you look at this, that the actual focal point is the pot that's sitting upon the shelf. And then so when I came back in here and I color the rest of these, which I'll probably do off camera, but when I come back here and I color the rest of these, I'm going to make every one of these little canisters very contrasting colors as well as the basket so that they all are the focal point sitting on the, on the top of this shelf. And the shelf is just kind of, it's there, it's got a lot of texture, it has highlights and everything where we need them, and it still looks very natural but it's still more neutral and it's just going to kind of fit into the rest of the coloring page when the page is finished. So this was our part two of how to improve your coloring skills. I hope you got a lot out of this video. If you would like me to do a part three, please just let me know down in the comments below because I have lots more ideas <laughs> that I would love to share with you, but only so much fits into one video. So if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you are not already subscribed and you're new here, please do subscribe to my channel and turn your bell notifications on so that you're always notified when I post a new video. Everything that you've seen me use in this video will be in the description box below, as well as a link to my Facebook group if you would like to join us there. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Happy coloring. Bye.